Welcome to your deep dive listener. We're not just learning a new language today, no way. We're diving into the languages that are shaping the future. AI languages. That's right. Going beyond the buzzwords to really get down to the nuts and bolts, the tools making AI tick, and how those tools are already impacting you. Totally. We've got your notes, AI languages, all prepped. But, you know, before we get into the weeds of code and all that, I think it would help to step back for a sec. What is AI, really? I mean, I know it's a big deal, obviously, but it's often explained in this kind of vague way. I hear you. AI gets tossed around a lot these days. At its core, AI is about systems that can do stuff that usually takes human smarts, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, picture explaining to a computer how to ride a bike. Okay. It's not just about steps, it's about balance, reacting to the environment. That's the kind of thing AI is trying to copy. So less about robots taking over, more about machines thinking like us. Exactly. And just like we learn in different ways, there are different types of AI. You've heard of machine learning, right? Yeah. That's a part of AI. Instead of programming every single scenario, a machine learning algorithm learns from data, gets better over time. Like how Spotify seems to know my music tastes better than I do. That's machine learning, right? Bingo. Music recommendations, spam filters, even your GPS figuring out how long till you get somewhere. That's all machine learning, crunching tons of data. Wow. And it gets even deeper. There's deep learning. Think of machine learning like baking with a cake mix, right? Deep learning is making that mix from scratch, raw ingredients, mm -hmm. more complex. Deep learning, the gourmet chef of AI. Right. But how do these machines actually learn? My notes mention things like supervised, unsupervised learning. What's the difference? Imagine teaching a dog a new trick. Supervised learning is like showing the dog a treat, saying sit. The machine learns what goes together, the treat, the word, the action. Makes sense. So unsupervised is letting the dog figure out stuff on its own. Exactly. It's like giving them a puzzle toy. The machine gets data, but no labels. It has to find the patterns itself. So it's making its own connections, almost like thinking independently. In a way. And there's another kind, reinforcement learning. That's like teaching with rewards and, well, not punishments, but discouraging bad stuff. The machine figures out what actions get the best results over time. Like those AIs that play chess. They weren't taught every move. They learned by playing and seeing what worked. That's amazing. We got to talk about natural language processing, NLP, right? It feels so futuristic, like we're talking to our devices and they get us. It's pretty wild how natural it's become. NLP is all the computers understanding our language, just like we are right now. Siri, Alexa, Google Translate. Even those chatbots that pop up on websites. It's come a long way. I remember those first chatbots. Rough. For sure. And NLP goes deeper, too. Sentiment analysis, where machines get the emotion behind what we say. Huge for companies wanting to know how people feel about their stuff. Like having a superpower to read the minds of thousands of customers at once. Powerful. We should mention computer vision while we're here, too. Cars driving themselves, phones recognizing faces. It's sci-fi stuff. It's amazing. Computer vision lets computers see and understand images and videos, kind of like we do. Think about medical imaging, where AI can help find diseases, or those self-driving cars reacting in real time. Mind-blowing. But I how does it all work? What's the language behind these intelligent machines? That's where our deep dive into AI languages actually starts, right? Absolutely. We use languages to communicate, and AI relies on programming languages. Those languages are the instructions, the framework, for these systems. And just like we have different languages, AI does too. So let's talk about the big ones, shall we? Python, R, and SQL. They sound pretty intense. They're like the stars of the show. Yeah. Each one has a big part to play. Let's start with Python. It's like the Swiss army knife of AI. First, it'll always useful. You got it. Python is known for being easy to read, even for beginners. Plus, there are tons of tools and resources made just for AI and data stuff, so a lot of developers love it. So Python is the all-rounder. What about R then? R is like the ultimate statistical calculator. Data scientists love it. It's all about digging into data and making it look amazing, visualizing massive data sets, finding patterns, and presenting it in a way that tells a story. So Python builds, R analyzes. Where does SQL fit in? It sounds more like something you'd use for organizing a database, not building AI. You're right, SQL is the master organizer. It's the language for managing and searching databases. Yeah. AI needs data, tons of it and SQL keeps it neat, organized, and easy to access. So it's like the foundation everything is built on. Without SQL, we couldn't make sense of all that data that makes AI smart. You got it. Think of it like this. Python and R are the architects, the builders. 
but SQL lays the groundwork. It's a team effort. This is making so much more sense now. Python builds, R analyzes, SQL organizes. It's a well-oiled machine. But let's get specific. What can we actually do with these languages in the real world, like actual examples? Let's take Python. Because it's so flexible, developers are using it for all sorts of things. Building those recommendation systems that seem to know what you want before you do, or developing self-driving car prototypes. Even in healthcare, helping doctors diagnose diseases earlier. So Python's like the Swiss army knife, doing it all. What about R? How does it help us make sense of all that data? R is a data scientist's best friend, no doubt. It's used for all sorts of things, predicting how customers behave, spotting trends in the stock market, even analyzing genetic data for research. What makes R really cool is how it can make data look amazing, you know? Think interactive graphs, charts that practically move, dashboards that bring complex data to life. So it's not just numbers, it's about finding the story in the data, making it engaging and informative. I yeah. like that. And lastly, SQL. What's its claim to fame? Not flashy visuals, I'm guessing. You got it. SQL's all about precision working behind the scenes. It's what lets AI systems access and use those huge data sets they need. Imagine trying to find one specific grain of sand on a beach. Okay, I see where you're going with this. SQL is the tool that lets you zero in on exactly what you need from a massive amount of data. Extracting data points, cleaning it up, getting it ready for analysis, it's essential for all of that. SQL, the unsung hero of AI, making sure the data flows, I'm realizing, each of these languages has its strengths, and they all work together to build these incredible AI systems. Like an orchestra, each instrument playing its part to make the music. But let's switch gears a bit, talk about how these languages are changing the business world. Predictive analytics is one area seeing a huge impact. Predicting the future now, that's getting serious. How does that even work? No crystal ball needed. It's about using data to make smart guesses about what might happen next. We use historical data, those powerful algorithms, and of course the machine learning we talked about, to make predictions about potential outcomes. Instead of just looking back, businesses can use AI to look ahead, make better decisions. That's got to be valuable. Got any examples of how that works in real life? Of course. Say a company wants to reduce churn, meaning how many customers they lose. Predictive analytics can look at past behavior, what they've bought, even stuff on social media to find patterns. To see if someone's about to jump ship so they can do something about it. Exactly. It's like getting a heads up. Are there other ways businesses use this? Tons. In finance, assessing risk, analyzing market trends, making smart investments, healthcare, identifying high-risk patients, intervening earlier, and then there's marketing, which... Uh, Speaking of, my notes mention customer segmentation. That's where AI helps businesses target specific groups of people. You got it. Dividing the customer base into smaller groups based on what they have in common. AI makes this process super sophisticated. So instead of one message for everyone, you can tailor it based on interests, behaviors, all that. Exactly. Those personalized recommendations you see online, on shopping sites or streaming services, that's AI looking at what you like, what you do. Or imagine a clothing store using AI to identify different shopper types, budget shoppers, fitness fans, and targeting them specifically with ads. It's like AI is reading our minds, knowing what we want before we do. But doesn't that feel kind of creepy too? All that personalization? It's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Transparency is key. Businesses have to be open about how they use data, give people control over their privacy. It's a tough one for sure. But it sounds like these AI languages are becoming, well, essential for businesses. Makes you wonder about the bigger picture, you know? Yeah. What are the implications of all this? The big question, right? As AI gets more advanced, right. more integrated, we have to think about the impact on us, on workers. Exactly. If machines are doing what humans used to, are our jobs safe? I hear a lot about AI and automation taking over jobs? It's a valid concern. AI can definitely automate certain things, but it's not all doom and gloom. It also creates new opportunities. Oh. When AI takes over those repetitive tasks, the data crunching, it frees us up yeah. you know, to focus on the more human stuff, creativity, strategy, connecting with each other. So not replacing us, but changing how we work. Right. Humans and AI working together. Like in healthcare, AI can help doctors diagnose, spot things on scans a human might miss. But it's still the doctor, talking to the patient, understanding their history, making the call. A partnership then. And like any good partnership, it takes good communication. Exactly. And that's why this whole deep dive into AI languages is so important. The more we know, the better we can navigate this new world. It's like learning the language of the future so we can help shape it, not just watch it happen. I like that. And it's bigger than just the tech stuff, too. We need to talk about the ethics of it all. 
making sure AI is used responsibly? How do we make it fair, prevent bias in the algorithms? How do we protect privacy with all this data flying around? These are questions for all of us, tech people, ethicists, even politicians. It's a lot, but exciting too. We're in a tech revolution and these AI languages are the keys. I agree. As we wrap this up, here's something for everyone listening to think about. The future of AI isn't something to be scared of. It's something we get to shape. It's up to us, our choices, our actions, and talking about the role we want AI to play. Powerful stuff. So listeners, as you go about your day, think about how AI is already there in your life and how you can be a part of guiding its future. Remember, knowing about AI languages isn't just about code, it's about being informed, being a part of this AI-driven world. That's your deep dive on AI languages. From those big, complex ideas to real-world uses, consider this your launching pad into the ever-changing world of AI. This is just the start, remember. The future of AI is full of potential, and understanding its languages is the key to unlocking it.